Hi, this is Matt Bowman with Vader News. Today I'm talking with Tim Chang, principal at Norwest Venture Partners. Tim specializes in digital media and gaming. He has an MBA from Stanford. He speaks three languages, and as you'll see in just a minute, he's a pretty darn articulate dude. Let's go find out where Tim wants to put his money. Let's start off on a 30,000 foot level. Mm -hmm. The recession has hit the VC industry pretty hard. People are saying that either the VC model is broken or it's going to reemerge in a few years completely changed. Mm -hmm. What's your take on the VC ecosystem? Well, there is some truth to the fact that it might be broken today, but like all financial markets, they self-correct. So it's not that VC as a category goes away, but it will evolve and it is right-sizing. So it is true that we may have a smaller venture capital industry than what we've had in the last five years. While it doesn't go away, you could say that at worst maybe half the funds will be in existence in five years from now and maybe it'll be half the size of what it has been and maybe that's the right size for the market. Uh, at the same time, you'll see the venture model evolve, so you'll have a bifurcation of venture funds that are going larger and larger and becoming global players on a multi-stage uh, type of model. And you'll also see smaller, more boutique-focused funds probably specializing in a sector, a region, uh, a particular stage, uh, you know, uh, maybe smaller outcomes. So you will see, for example, the rise of things like the Super Angels, which are smaller funds but operate kind of like very, very early stage uh, VC models focused on a particular sector or particular size of uh, investment. Let's talk specifically about um, your sector of expertise, digital media. Mm -hmm. What's happening in that industry right now? Mm -hmm. What's going to happen to all of the startup companies that focused on online video and mm -hmm. advertising mm -hmm. um, now that we have this downturn? Yep. So uh, digital media is particularly interesting because uh, there are two tectonic plate shifts happening. One is the traditional business model of advertising is under tremendous pressure with the recession. And so a lot of people come to the conclusion pure play ad business models don't work anymore for basically content and destination type of plays. On the other hand, distribution has become exceedingly fragmented with the internet, with mobile, with uh, Web 2.0, social media, and so traditional outlets of how you publish to a mass audience are disappearing. So uh, for me, you know, it's, it's a very interesting time because media and the advertising industry have to reinvent themselves. To me, the, one of the brightest spots of hope on the horizon is actually in the gaming and uh, it's sort of interactive online entertainment areas. So it's kind of funny because uh, I joke that virtual goods is becoming sort of the new advertising of 2009. So whereas last year, all the, the business plans I saw had a revenue model that would say, oh, we're ad-based. Today, it's all, we're virtual goods-based. And so you've seen a lot of Web 2.0 entrepreneurs shift to try to be social gaming or um, you know, free-to-play online games. And uh, it is true, we're seeing gaming take a big rise. Uh, and uh, I think it's because gaming can monetize in multiple ways beyond just advertising. So you're seeing a lot of people flock towards gaming as a potential you know, kind of safe spot. The virtual goods model is based uh, on micropayments. Mm -hmm. so people are going to be willing to open their purse strings to just put up a few bucks here mm -hmm. and there. Um, I remember a few years ago this was seen as a huge barrier. Mm -hmm. well, there's the penny barrier that people just weren't willing to go over. Do you think that the consumer mentality is mm -hmm. changing? Uh, I think it is, and young people are being trained uh, from day one on new services like Club Penguin, which is still subscription-based, but subscription as an offshoot of these virtual currencies that they're racking up by playing and engaging with uh, the world. So I think you're going to have a lot of young users being trained uh, and educated on how to in interact and pay with these virtual goods systems from games and websites early on, and they'll be, it'll be a very natural fit for them to then move over to microtransactions for things like mobile payments, first for online digital goods, and then eventually um, you know, retail goods in the physical world as well. So given this new playing field, what kind of companies are you looking for in yeah. terms of sectors and also the qualities that you look for in companies? Sure, sure. So you know, having grown up programming and playing games since age 10 on, on Apple, gaming is a big passion area of mine personally, and I'm, I'm very happy that it's become a robust investment area. That said, uh, I don't typically invest in, in pure game companies that are just studios. Uh, instead, we're looking for next-gen publishers, platforms, and also gaming technologies and enablers. And what I mean by that is even gaming itself is shifting from packaged media towards really gaming as a service. And that's really just kind of a, a template for the shift of the media industry overall towards what I call media as a service or entertainment as a service. It's going cloud-based. It's going sort of free-to-play and frictionless distribution. 
distribution, monetized through advertisements, virtual goods, and premium subscriptions. So we're looking at all the pieces that enable that. We're going to see vertical cloud solutions just for the gaming cloud. We're going to see next-gen sort of PayPal 2.0 for microtransactions payment processing. We're going to see all, a whole lot of these new service layers around gaming as well, in addition to the equivalent of a publisher 2.0 on new platforms like social networks, on iPhone, on, on those sorts of new platforms. Last question. What makes Tim Chang tick? What makes you <laughs> get up in the morning? Uh, well, you know, I, I think I'm very lucky that I get to invest in just what I'm passionate about personally. So uh, I've always been about gadgets and, and games, and, and uh, I'm a big guitarist, so music and media have been sort of core to my heart. Uh, do you but, play a lot of guitar hero? Uh, yeah, I do. It, it's, it's a lot of fun. I play a lot of regular guitar as well. But, uh, you know, those are things I just do naturally, and to be able to weave that into your day job is, is something I'm very thankful for because then, you know, these are things that you think and dream about and, and uh, talk about all the time anyway. It's not really work, it's this sort of play. And uh, this platform, uh, you know, working at Norwest to be able to investigate these areas to invest in, make money, and also back really smart entrepreneurs and thought leaders in this area is, uh, is an incredible experience. I was very sort of lucky to have that. Tim, thanks very much. We really appreciate your time. Yep, thank you. I'm Matt Bowman for Vader News.